This is a tutorial on how to use the forms in Google Docs, Google Drive. So if you uh, navigate to our um, Google Drive page, um, you will be prompted with a login. And you're going to log in with your um, username and password that you use to log on to your um, computer at school. And so I'm just going to go ahead and log in with my username and password here. And then I'm going to click sign in. And immediately I'll be um, confronted or just uh, see my um, Google Drive page. And um, the great thing with Google Drive um, is you'll notice all your forms or anything that you've created automatically saves in here. Over here on the left side, you will see your create button. So we're going to go ahead and click on create once we've logged into Google Drive. And from there, we're going to select on form. So we're going to select form here. Once form loads, we are going to uh, then create your questions. By default, um, it creates two questions for you just by default there. Um, so if we take a look at a couple things here, just kind of starting at the top and then working our way down. Uh, at the very top left-hand corner, you're going to notice add an item. From this list, you can add multiple questions or section headers or page breaks. You also have the option um, to create a theme, change your theme, and we'll be taking a look at those two here. Um, in a couple minutes. The options you have underneath, um, there are three check marks that you have to, um, you may click or unclick. The first one allow users to edit responses. That's going to allow them to um, change their responses. Uh, the next one is require um, them to log into our domain. So we have our own domain that wins with wsdr4students.org and that's all of our students. So you can require them to log in um, to um, take to use the form to fill out the form. Another option is to automatically collect their username. So if you have that checked, when they take the um, the form and use the form on there, um, it will automatically collect their username and it'll automatically require them to log in. I'm going to uncheck that and uncheck the sign in because I don't want them to sign in. I just want them to be able to go to this form and take it. And once again, it's going to give me that warning saying they're not going to need to log in. So I select OK and it's going to make that change. Untitled form, that's the way you can give a title to your form. So I could put, um, you know, class um, conversation. And uh, underneath it says you can include any text that will help them out. So um, please take time to answer the following questions. Uh, these are just additional directions or comments that you would like to make for your students. Then un underneath we have the ability to create our questions. So like I said, by default two questions are created. So the first one um, is just the same question one. Maybe my first question I want to ask is um, um, date or month of your birth. That's my first question. And I can provide helpful tense like please type out the month if I would like to have helpful text. And then I can also select the question type. Right now it's default by text, but I can change it to a paragraph text if they need to write more, or multiple choice, check boxes, etc. It also gives you a little example of what it will look like. There's one more button on here, which is make this required question. So this is going to require them to answer it, and if that is the case, I'm just going to put a check mark. And click done. When I click done, it gives me just a little snapshot. You'll notice there's a red asterisk there just letting you know that this is a box that needs to be filled out. There are also three little icons that appear next to every single question. Those appear over here on the right. The pencil is your edit button, so if you need to make a correction, select on the pencil. There is the little duplicate button, which is just two little squares there, just letting you will duplicate that. Um, that item on there. And the last one is a trash can, which will delete it. So since we have sample question number two and I want to change that, I'm just going to click on my pencil over here, which is then going to bring me in to have the ability to edit. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. And I'm just going to say, you know, um, school name. Once again, depending on the question type, I just want that to be text. I do want that required. And I'm going to hit done. So I have two questions. 
If I want to add another question, I can either duplicate it using the duplicate icon here, or I can come up to add an item at the very top left hand corner. Click on add an item and I can select what kind of question I would like to ask. So for example, if I would like a multiple choice, I can select on here and select multiple choice and I'll create it here. So I can set select grade. And then I can, once again, question types, multiple choice, and I just come down here and type in ninth. Notice it's kind of grayed out here. All I have to do is click in there and it will give me the option to type in the next option here. And we'll give just a little more. I'll finish up with 12th. Um, they also have a button on here, and this only happens on multiple uh, choice items or selections, um, is the ability to um, add other, which is going to create a box for them to um, type in another answer um, on here. So um, with this question, since it is high school, we're not going to give them an option to do that. So I'm just going to hit X to remove it. And you can remove any of these options by hitting the X. You don't want to um, click on here. Um, if you do that, what happens is it kind of marks that one and will not take that mark off. The only way to remove that mark is by clicking on the X to delete it and then re-adding it back in. Once you're finished, if you want to make it required or not, put a check mark and hit done. Now, uh, we have created all of our questions on here. Uh, the great thing with Google Docs is everything and Google Drive is everything saves automatically. Um, there is a save button up here that you can put on the top right hand corner, but it is saving automatically. Another thing you can take a look at is the theme. So if I click up on the themes up here next to add an item, it will take me into an option to preview um, and kind of create a nice little theme um, view on there. Um, so for example, if I want to take a look at this one, I just click and what it's going to do is give me a quick little snapshot. Um, one thing I have noticed is sometimes the images don't show up, but just trust it. It will be there when you take the uh, or have your form. If you don't like it, hit cancel, and it will take you back to editing. And you can click on theme, plain again, and uh, maybe I want this Wall Street one. If I click on there, it gives me a snapshot. If I like it, I click on apply, and you'll notice now it says next to theme, Wall Street, meaning that theme has been applied. Now, as you create your forms, at the very bottom here, so you can see here, go the very bottom here, we have a black bar that always appears, and it says you can view your published item here. If you click on that link, a new window is going to open up, and it's going to take you to that live view of your form. Now, at the very top is the URL. So when you click on that black box, it's going to take you to the URL. And this is what you want to copy and paste and paste on your Moodle site or your website so your students can take this quiz. So once again, um, when you're looking at the form, that's the link you want or the link and that black bar at the very bottom. This is a confusing part and you want to make sure you grab, grab this one and not another one um, or your students won't be able to take the quiz or the um, form that you had created. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Now as I make my way back, I'm going to go ahead and close this. Now once you click out of your survey, you will notice you're now actually not looking at your survey view anymore. You're actually looking at your um, spreadsheet view. Um, so when it closes, you're actually going to, it's going to close out of the form, but it's actually going to pull up a survey view of it instead, uh, your spreadsheet view of it. So now I have my date uh, timestamp column, and then you can see here's my month column, school name column, and grade. Um, those are all my options on there um, that my students will select or have to fill in. Now as my students fill out the survey, or, you know, all of their answers will be recorded directly into this survey couple things to take notice of is that you do have the ability to download it um, from file download as an Excel sheet so you could download it as an Excel sheet and manipulate it even more if you'd like um, but then um, this form column um, this is really what I want to point out if you click on form um, you have the ability um, to come in here and edit your form so if you need to make any corrections to it you just click on edit form it's going to open up a new window and allow you to make changes to that um, survey. Go ahead and close that. 
Um, the other thing I have to can select from here is go to live form. So if I can't figure out that URL that I was supposed to go to or I lost it, if I go to form, go to live form, it's going to open up that form again so I can copy the URL to provide for my students. Another one I can come and select is show summary of responses. If I click on this option, it's going to open up a new window and it's going to give me a graph based on and responses based on the questions that I've asked. Um, so if I had them type in text answers, um, I will see all their text answers here. If I had them vote on th something through a multiple choice or a uh, checklist, I will see the percentages in a bar graph located right here. So this concludes our um, short tutorial on using Google Forms inside of um, Google Apps. Um, one last thing before we conclude um, to make notice of, you will notice there are some URLs up at the top. These are not the URLs to provide for your students to take the survey. Once again, what you're looking for is under Form and what you want to select is go to live form and that will give you the correct URL to provide for your students on your Moodle page or a web page or um, even something that you can copy and go to um, for example um, tinyurl.com and you can paste in that long really really long URL and uh, they will either either give you a new um, URL or you can type in your own like Mr. Lawrence's Oops. Mr. Lawrence's survey. And if I click on make tiny URL, it will shorten that so I can just give them the URL that says tinyurl.com slash Mr. Lawrence's survey, which would be much easier to type in. Thank you, and this concludes the short tutorial on Google Forms.